Hi, welcome to another tutorial from tdcat.com. Today we're on Machina again, and we're talking about projects, scenes, groups, and patterns. If you're new to Machina, and you're from a background of a standard, I say standard, but a door like Ableton or Reaper or something like that, you're more familiar with the layout and the structure within that type of door. So, in a, for example here, in Ableton we have tracks going down here, uh, depending on which view you're looking at, tracks going down, and within each of those tracks you might have, say, a drum kit, or a bass, or a synth, or something like that. And then within each of those tracks you have clips, and each of those clips contain a piece a bit of music, or a structure, or a fill, or something like that. With Machina, it's a little bit different, because everything's named differently, and it's everything's kind of done differently. So when you first come across Machina, it's a little bit confusing. So that's what I want to try and clarify here, or at least attempt to clarify. So first of all, Projects in Machina is exactly the same as a set in Ableton. That's, just, that's the top level. Further down from projects is the scene. And here you can see we have our timeline along here in bars. And we have a scene. So this is default. It has one scene in a project. And it has uh, defaulted to one bar. There's nothing in it at the moment, so I suppose a scene isn't exactly the timeline, it's kind of a section of the timeline. Then we move down to groups, and if you were in Ableton and you wanted to add, say, some drums, you'd add a track, first of all. So groups are the closest equivalent to tracks in Ableton. So let's add a group now, and there's our group, and we're going to name it so that it means a little bit more. I'm going to call it drums. And then clips within that track are patterns, basically. So when you create a pattern, you can create multiple patterns within a group, and you can drop those into your timeline exactly as you would clips within Ableton. So let's do that now and try and sort of create a sort of mental equivalent or picture. I mean, it is still different to Ableton, but there are a lot of similarities to how it works. So once you kind of get past that initial mental block, if you like, and it's not unusual to have that. You get people coming back saying, oh, it's really straightforward, it's dead easy, what, what's the big deal? But I totally get it. When you first start using Machina, it is so different that you do tend to have this kind of mental block on what, oh, hang on, what, so what's a, what's a pattern doing here? And what's, okay, so where do I put a pattern? Anyway. So we'll carry on now, and we've got our track, which has drums in it, but of course we've got no, no sounds in there at the moment, you know, so in Ableton you'd probably drop a plug-in into there, and you can do that here, but we're just going to drop some sounds onto our pads. And so I'm going to go to our sound, sound section, and we already have a few um, highlighted, uh, some fav favorited, if you like. So let's put some in to our, into our first couple of pads. That, that's a nice kick that I used last time, this nice snare, and a nice closed 808 hi-hat. Can't beat an 808 hi-hat. So there we go. And you'll notice that I'm not showing the controller down here, because the controller's not the important bit here. Uh, there are certain things that we're probably covering in the controller uh, on a later tutorial, but for this it's more about kind of getting your head around what a project is, what the group is, what a scene is, and what patterns are. So now we have our track, i.e. our group, we have some sounds within it, so we need to create a clip, i.e. a pattern. So we do that by clicking here, and we'll rename this first, and we'll say, um, we'll just call this, uh, I don't know, intro or something. And then we'll, we, we, you'll notice that the clip by default, sorry, I'm calling it Ableton stuff, the pattern by default gets dropped into the scene, and the scene uh, is one bar, and the pattern is by default one bar. But we can, let me just move this across so you can see that, so that we, we can expand the length of the pattern out, and the scene stretches to accommodate it. So if you have your controller set to auto, 
it will expand out. Uh, I think it goes one bar, two bar, four bars, eight bars, but you can do it to any kind of level that you want. So we'll just do this as a two bar pattern to start with. So let's put our metronome on. We've got 110 BPM here and let's just play. And you can see the timeline, you can see the sort of this clip moving along. And I suppose this bit right now is the equivalent to the, the bit at the bottom in Ableton. So once you've got a clip in here, you'd have this bit down here. And I suppose that's at this point is the equivalent to that. So let's hit record. And uh, let's just put anything down really. Okay, there we go. So just a very basic rhythm, and that is our first clip. So that's no different from this having a drum kit on it and having a couple of MIDI events within it. Yeah? So that's pretty straightforward. So what do you do now if you want to add more to it? Well, if you wanted to add some synth in Ableton, you'd add another track, and that's what we'll do here. We'll add another group. And we'll call this synth and I haven't really planned this so I don't know what I'm going to use for my synth. Uh, <laughs> what can I use? Uh, I'm just going to I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sort of fudge this a little bit and just load in. Load in a kit from one of the preset things and see what we get. Chords. Good. We've got some chords in there. So Brilliant. So I'm going to copy that to the first. Copy that to the first one. I'm going to get rid of all the rest because I don't need those sounds. And rename this again because it's renamed it to the default that the kit loaded up. We can take out these events. So we now have a pattern already in here because. Uh, that loaded up with the kit, which is quite a few bars longer. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all the events in this pattern and just reduce the length of it. So we'll have it... We're going to have it double the length of the first pattern here, the drum pattern. So going to have it double the length of that because what I want to show is that even though your second group contains a pattern that's twice as long as this drum one. The good thing about Machina is it just loops it over and continues playing. It kind of automatically does that, really. Uh, it's all about all about rhythm in, in Machina. It's less about sort of your kind of... It'd be, I think it'd be tricky to do sort of any kind of progressive music in Machina. It's, it's more about your sort of fixed rhythm stuff. Uh, so let's put something into this Maybe we could add a second one. We should have added a second one, but I'll just do it with one for now. And I've just realized I'm not recording, so let's, do, <laughs> let's start that again. Um... <laughs> Okay, so now we have that first section there, and what we might want to do now is do a little drum fill. So we'll add a new scene, so a new section. We're looking at a new sort of area on our timeline now. So if we go back to Ableton, we probably we'd probably just say, right, okay, I want to add another little MIDI clip here, you know, Control Shift M, and I want to put a little drum fill into here or something like that. So that's what we're kind of doing now. We're adding a new scene, and we'll create another pattern under the drum. So go back to our drum group and go back to our patterns and then just do another pattern. 
and do a rename and call this fill one. And that's probably going to be quite short because it's just a one bar. We'll just do a one bar fill. So uh, if we click on here now, you'll notice that by default it just loops this one part, this one scene. And just um, just so you know, straight after I'm creating these, I'm doing a quick shift shift five and fifth pad to quantize on the controller. But um, yeah, so there's our there's our little fill, pretty basic. Um, Nice. Nice. Okay. So now we might want to continue it on. So we'll add another scene. And maybe we want to just have the same thing again. So why not just go back to our drums? And in that scene, we'll say, oh, well, we want the intro in there again. Fine. Put the intro in there. And we might want the synth section in there again. So we'll just go back and. Oh, we've got all sorts of stuff in here, actually. Um, and add in our synth section again. Uh, and if we wanted to play that in full, what you need to do is you need to double click in this timeline area here. So you'll see by default, we just have this section in gray. Uh, sorry, in a lighter gray, and this section in a darker gray. So what will happen if we play that? you'll notice it just plays this scene. So we need to double click that and it expands out and it'll now play our full scene, all our scenes together. All right, so it's not musically fascinating, but hopefully you're starting to get the idea uh, and if we wanted maybe at this point to bring in some bass, well, that's fine. We can do that. So we might want to click on, we might want to go to break that down. So we're just looking at scene three again, add another group, and then add some bass to it. And I don't, again, have anything prepped for this. So I'm going to have to just pick up something uh, as I did last time. So I don't know why I renamed that. I really am messing this up, aren't I? Uh, have we got anything bassy in here? Bass, 15, so what's, what's in that? All right. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Take those out. Copy this to our top sound here. Don't have to do that, but I'm just going to do that anyway. I'm going to select all our events and delete them. With a control A and just standard standard commands really to delete. Again, I'm using the keyboard and the interface here for all of this, not the controller. So that uh, that's why I haven't got this the controller showing down the bottom. And um, and then to just delete this sound. So in the foot in here here we've got a pretty not exactly the bass I wanted, but. But it's it's some bass, isn't it? So we can add now. We've got a, already got a ton of patterns in here, so we can sort of delete these out because we don't want these. These are from the kit that I just loaded. What we would do is we would add a new pattern into here, make it maybe as long. Oh, come on, as long as the synth section, and now we can just start recording. Oh, hang on a second. Right, so that bass doesn't go at all. It's not in the same key, but we still have our sort of bass section here now in a, in a pattern, and we have that in scene three. So now we can move on and we can start building it up uh, more and more. We can add more and more tracks to it, i.e. more and more groups, as they're known. And you can tell that this is sort of what this area is for because it, it, this is one section that does allow you to expand it down, you know, so you could create a ton of stuff here, have loads of patterns in loads of groups, and just start building up your song and sound, whichever way you like. So if we now quickly go back to projects, 
uh, preset projects. If we load up a project from, uh, we'll load one up from Crystal Daggers. When we load one up, you'll start to see why projects are built the way they are. And this is obviously a good way of learning and working by example. So we can see here we've got our different groups with different drums, each with a set of sounds in, basses and synths. There's a vocal chant in there, just one little bit. And then within each of these, we've got different patterns, i.e. different clips, on our timeline, and the scenes have been named by their relevant clip, sort of their relevant sections. So you might have this section here, which is your, you know, your, this chunk of timeline here is your intro, and this chunk of timeline here across multiple tracks is your chorus. And that's what they've done here. They've taken the scenes and they've called verse one, verse two, chorus, chorus two. So if we play the whole thing. <laughs> So there we go. That's just an introduction to projects, scenes, groups, and patterns in Machina, and a quick kind of look at how they differ from uh, the the structure in a standard door like Ableton, and uh, and just sort of just to have some help around getting your head around that initial switch over to the Machina way of doing things. So I hope that's helpful, and I will leave you with. Uh, something from the Peach Trees project, I, th uh, I think. Let's see how that sounds. Anyway, yeah, catch you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>